everyone, this is Lionel Pinto for Analytics University. In this particular video, I will be explaining to you how is the P-E ratio of an index computed. We know that the P-E ratio for any stock is nothing but the price per share divided by the trailing 12 months earnings per share. So that is the P-E ratio. But then uh, we generally hear statements like the market is expensive or or the market is cheap the market is fairly valued and when people mean the market what they mean is the index it could be the dow jones index or the nifty 50 index uh, so so what do they mean when they say that the market is expensive or cheap or fairly valued is the p ratio of the index so basically that particular statements are based on the p ratio of an of the index so in this in this video I'll be explaining to you how the PE ratio of, of an index is computed. In in the previous video I've shown you I had created a a dummy index and uh, which included five stocks and in this I'd shown to you what an index is, how is the index value computed, what are the weights of the index, so on and so forth. So I explained to you those parameters in my previous video. So in this particular video, I'm going one step ahead and I'm including and I'll be explaining to you also how the P ratio of that same index is calculated. I've selected the same five stocks with the same market share and uh, with the same market price and the outstanding shares and, and the free float shares. This, so, okay, so I'm over here. So the parameter, we have the same stocks. The parameters that we have is market price total income total income is nothing but the net profit or rather the bottom line of of the company for the uh, for the trailing 12 months at the last four quarters we have the total outstanding shares and uh, we have the ttm eps that is that is the trailing 12 months earnings per share and how is the trailing 12 months earnings per share computed it is obtained by dividing the total income by the by the total outstanding shares so 200 it was 200 also total income the total outstanding shares was also 200 so the eps per share will be one and we we have come across the term called total free float outstanding shares this uh, the free float outstanding shares i just repeat for the benefit of those who did not watch my previous video the free float outstanding shares are the shares that are not held by the promoters and it is these shares that are that take part in the price discovery mechanism so uh, generally indexes only use the free float outstanding shares and not all the outstanding shares so uh, the next column is the total free float market capitalization that is obtained by multiplying the market price per share into total outstanding outstanding shares sorry rather the market price per share into the total free float outstanding shares that is column a into column e so in the case of apple it is 10 into 50 which is 500 the next column is total free float earnings that is obtained by multiplying the earnings per share column d with the total free float outstanding shares that is column e so it is 1 into 50 that is 50 for apple so this way we compute the total free float market capitalization and total free float earnings for all for each of these shares and then we sum it up so overall in the overall row you see the total free float market capitalization which is sum of all the five rows and total free float earnings which is sum of all the five rows so now how what is the formula to compute the p ratio of the index p ratio of the index will be will be the total free float market capitalization to the total free float earnings we know that the total free float market capitalization is 10250 total free float earnings is 1025 and so the PE ratio of the index is 10,250 by 1,025, that is 10. So in this way, the PE ratio for any given index can be computed. You There will be similar questions uh, as to how dynamic is the PE ratio. Yes, the PE ratio changes every day for every given point of time. For every change in the price of the components of the index, the PE ratio will change because the P ratio is nothing but ratio of price to earning so price stocks are traded daily prices change and hence the P ratio changes okay so just 
I have taken a live index that is the Nifty 50 index. Nifty 50 index is the index of the Indian stock market and it is uh, India's uh, India's most popular stock market index coming as the 50 stocks. In this particular uh, slide, if you look at the, row, the if you look at the chart above, what you see is you see the the blue line shows the average P ratio for each of the years, so 2001 to 2016 uh, up to the current date, have the average P ratio for each of the years. So what is the average ratio for 2001, 2002, 2003? That that way, uh, the orange line is the index, and at, at the I told you earlier, uh, when market capitalization of the components of the index increases. The index value increases over over a period of time, and that is that is that is very see, clearly seen over here. So you you will see one more line called as a trend line. So trend line is the the the, the trend of the uh, and this trend line is a trend line of the uh, of the index of the P ratio. It is, the trend line is not the trend line of the uh, closing value of the index. The trend line is the trend line of the p ratio of the index and what you see from the trend line is that uh, with with uh, as, as the time has progressed from 2001 to 2016 you will see that on average the p ratio has increased uh, like it was 16.3 in 2001 and currently it is 20.1 and uh, on an average Average P ratio that is historic average has been 18.47 and the current P ratio is 21.56. Uh, so generally the, the question that is asked is are the markets expensive, are they cheap? So uh, what is, that's, that's again a subject to, uh, subject to question and there are many, uh, uh, because there are many attributes to know whether, whether it is expensive or cheap or fairly valued. But generally the approach is uh, taking the average PV over the last 10, 15, whatever time period and checking if the current P is higher or lower than the average P. So in this case, the current P, which is 21.56, is higher than the average historical P, that is 18.47. So you might at the first glance say that since the current P is higher than the average historical P, the market is expensive. But I had told you something in my earlier video that the the price of the stock or rather the or the uh, value of the index is just is just not dependent or rather how expensive the index is is just not dependent on what the index was historically over a period of time what happens is that there are certain uh, major changes rather we call them as structural changes in the economy uh, just to and that is why I have pr I've plotted the GDP growth rate below. So what you see over here is that 2001, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, uh, the, 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 the GDP growth in this country was lower. And all of a sudden from 2003, 4 onwards, you see a significant jump in the growth rate of, of India, the GDP growth rate of India. And with that jump, you also see an increase in the P ratio from 14 to 21. But yeah, after that, it has again fallen whenever you, whenever the prices are above trend lines they do tend to correct but nevertheless they, the p ratio has, has uh, from 2005 6 onwards has always been higher than what it was in 2002 2003 for almost for, for uh, at at most of the points of time so what what would have happened was that or rather what the market would have thought was that uh, since the growth rate of the economy is increasing the the it also means that the corporate income will increase rather the growth rate of corporate income will increase and higher growth rate of corporate income uh, justifies a higher p ratio so that could be one one thought due to which the current p ratio is high uh, is higher compared to what was in 2001 2002 or or rather what it was historically but that's again a hypothesis the ratios could could again uh, 
longer term ratio the next four or five years could again um, converge to the historical average or or it might have a, a new ratio altogether because of higher corporate earnings uh, but provided those higher corporate earnings uh, are shown over the next few years so so this is the way how uh, how pe ratios are looked at how how whether they are seen whether they are expensive or cheap uh, it is always compared with the historical pe ratio um, certain structural changes in the economy are also looked at uh, as to whether all of a sudden the economy has become more liberal its macroeconomic parameters have increased significantly so all this all these ratios uh, all these play and uh, play a uh, value in, in in justifying the pe ratio of the index